Holy Trinity in San Francisco is the oldest Greek Orthodox Church west of Chicago. Established in 1904, the early Church Fathers would have never thought that over 100 years later, their children's children would take on a project that would humbly give their community the largest mosaic face of Jesus Christ in the Western Hemisphere. Iconographer Robert Andrews has been working on Holy Trinity's mosaic icons for 43 years. Working closely with the late Father Anthony Kasturis, Holy Trinity has been transformed into a beautiful Byzantine landmark. Traditionally, Greek Orthodox churches have the image of Christ in their domes, known in Greek as the Pantokratora, or the Almighty. But because of the enormous size of Holy Trinity's dome, and the great cost involved. This was only a mere dream. Until now. But how did this 23-foot face of Christ, spanning the church's 3,400 square foot dome, finally become a reality? The sanctuary of Holy Trinity was turned into a construction zone, taking 10 days to erect the scaffolding spanning 65 feet high. On top of the workers' platform, there were smaller, movable pieces of scaffolding in order for the workers to reach all parts of the dome. Down below, the rest of Holy Trinity's gems were covered for protection. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. For nearly ten months, the faithful of Holy Trinity held services downstairs. As the upstairs sanctuary was being transformed, the retrofit process finally began. Because of the weight and pressure that the mosaic would add, the dome had to be retrofitted and reinforced with steel rings, a very labor-intensive process that made even the workers wonder what they were getting themselves into. We're all going to quit because we thought it was going to be a lot easier. Holes had to be made in the original steel holding up the dome so that the new supporting beams could be attached. The beams had to be hoisted up to the top, Coming down. cut to perfection, and finally welded together. This wasn't their average job. Every ring uh, is different because of the size of the radius. As you go out, you get more rings to elongate it. Um, a lot of welding, kind of hard to get to in there. We don't consider them challenges. It's more like uh, just things that keep your job interesting. Six weeks later, the steel workers completed what they called the spider web. He's got about five more splices, and then the welding should be complete. As the crates of mosaics waited downstairs, the reshaping of the dome continued towards the heavens, with the framing phase. Bob Andrews and his installation crew needed a plastered dome to install the Padokratora. This group of workers knew how to pass the time. But before the mudslinging phase could even start, a frame had to be built. They started from the center and worked their way down then around the perimeter of the dome. One worker goes through and does all the hanging, 
making it easier for the other two to come from behind and tie it off. Next, a metal mesh known as lath had to be installed in the dome so that the plaster had something to stick to. A much different hands-on process compared to the previous welding stage. The workers had to make sure the radius was precise as there was very little room for error when anticipating the mosaic installation. The dance floor, as the workers called it, needed to be covered and tarped in preparation for the next phase. One hundred and seventy-five bags, each weighing ninety pounds, equaling almost nine tons of added weight, were delivered to the church for the plaster phase. A mud bath was coming. At a spot where most of Holy Trinity's congregation is used to standing in line to receive communion, one worker starts mixing the mud downstairs. while others start the mud-slinging process on top of the scaffolding. A first coat is applied on the metal mesh, while bucket loads of plaster continue to be sent up. Days later, a second coat is added to the grouted first coat The plaster phase was now completed, giving way to the highly anticipated arrival of Bob Andrews. Coming down like this, I feel like a monk at Mount Athos in the Meteora. At age 83, iconographer Robert J. Andrews was ready for the biggest challenge of his artistic career. Accompanying Bob was his son and longtime assistant Tim. And for the first time ever, a team of mosaic installers from the studio in Italy where the tiles were manufactured. The installation of the mosaic is uh, very simple and very complex. As the first mosaics went in, it didn't take long for Jesus' face and eyes to take shape. Jessica Faelli was in charge of unpacking the crates of numbered mosaics. Following the map that was created in Italy, Jessica cemented or buttered the numbered sheets. In the meantime, Mario Sarcinelli and Fausto Candido prepared the corresponding sections of the dome with cement. Jessica then handed them the prepared sheets as they methodically started piecing the puzzle together. They beat the sheets in so it self grouts. We don't have to grout afterwards. It self grouts as we beat it in. Because the sheets are butted and the wall has cement on it. Up close, the mosaic tiles take no specific shape. The true art of the mosaic form is noticed in the beard of Jesus Christ. As the face was completed, Mario and his crew began the majestic golden halo. All right, go ahead. Tim was in charge of following close behind to peel off the original paper containing Bob's drawing, revealing the mosaic in its intended form. 